Hello, welcome to another edition of Let's Get Talking with Desi. My name is Desmond Okrekodans. You can call me Desi Feeden. Big thanks to Aska Media, Joshua Skin Photography and Obi Consult, making sure that we're able to do this. Thank you so much for watching. You can like, share and also comment um, on YouTube, Desi Feeden and also Facebook, Let's Get Talking with Desi. So I've been following a conversation on social media, especially on Facebook, about uh, some sort of agenda that has been set about an airport you know, in Cape Coast. And I'm here to talk to one of the persons who is really for this move. He's a renowned broadcaster here in the central region, mostly in Cape Coast. And he goes by the name Lucas Mensah. You can also call him the candy man. You're welcome. So this agenda on social media and on Facebook, I see you're really pushing for this. What necessitated this move what was the premise for this particular agenda no airport no vote okay uh, thanks for the question it is just simple and short let's go back to Ghanaian history uh, we all know Cape Coast to be the first capital of the country and our question is when Cape Coast was the capital then Cape Coast like then good coast mm. What really showed? What do we have on the ground to truly indicate that uh, Cape Coast was the capital? When a town or a city is a capital of an area of a town or a country, what it means is, uh, is that that particular city is supposed to be connected with other towns of the country, transportation-wise. It is supposed to be connected uh, to uh, the rest of the cities across the world. So those days when Cape Coast was uh, the capital of the country, how was it connected to America, New York? How was it connected to, uh, let's say, uh, Paris in France? How was it connected to Asia? Do, do you understand? It, it is supposed to be connected to the rest of the world, transportation-wise. You get it? In what sense? We, there's, there are certain facilities and amenities, at least, to show that truly, truly, uh, this particular town or city was the former capital of the country. But in our case, there's nothing like that because there was nothing like a harbor. You understand? Do you have anything like a harbor in Cape Coast? There's nothing like a harbor in Cape Coast. And there's nothing like a, a railway. There are no lines in Cape Coast to show, let's say, okay, in those days, Cape Coast was connected to uh, Kumase or Buase or Accra, as in transportation. There was nothing like an airport. So what really showed or uh, what can we uh, put on paper or like tell our children that, oh, uh, because of this and this and this, Cape Coast was the capital of Ghana in those days. So that is the argument. And what we are saying is, it is long overdue. Why? Because research indicates about 87% of tourists who travel to the country, they come purposely because of Capos, because of Elmina, because of Asim Manso, because of Kakum. You see, oh. So why is the country not giving the international, the tourists, opportunity, the opportunity for them to land straight into the uh, tourism hub of the country. But they have to bypass somewhere, like go somewhere before they take, uh, like, let's say, buses or something to go through some stress, as in traffic, two, three, four hours before you enter into the tourism hub. What we are saying, what we are saying is no. It is unacceptable. A country like Ghana shouldn't have just one international airport. Even just Togo, just our neighbors, Togo, this tiny country, they have two international airports. Ghana, you have one. Jamaica, what do Jamaica have? They have nothing. But they have three international airports. So why should Accra be the only gateway to Ghana? Why should Accra be the only gateway to Ghana? So that is the argument. That's, 
That is the argument. It is supposed to uh, boost our tourism industry. You see, it is supposed to uh, reshape the face of the city. No, Cape Coast looks too old. When you are outside, like when people visit, they go like, wow. Some even term Cape Coast as a village, like the biggest village in Ghana. It's all because of this uh, tiny, tiny, small kind of infrastructural development that we don't seem to uh, have or encourage. It is very bad. Mm. So, so you've mentioned the airport and you've mentioned other things like uh, the basic stuff that a city at should least, at have. Least. Um, I've heard other arguments that go like, shouldn't we have all the others? You've mentioned the railways, you've mentioned uh, uh, harbour. Shouldn't we have you no know, ones that, that that we can manage for the meantime that can so that before you get in the airport, you bring the airports in. You know, so you the country, the, the, the city would, would be in good shape what, before the airport comes in. Priority now, like you tell me. Well, you're moving for the agenda, so I think that. Uh, no, but you are, you are telling me there are others hmm. we are supposed to, uh, you know, make sure we have or before. What don't we have? Okay. So we, we are talking about tourists coming into, sure. into, into the city. Sure. And most of the times they come here um, during the day, and at night they go back to Accra. Is, is our tourism is industry friendly? It is, it is because Cape Coast is not that developed. So shouldn't we have mm. the hotel wait, services? Wait, 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 wait. You know, mm. people have been giving excuses. Okay. Our past leaders. Anytime you try to do something major as an infrastructure, mm. they'll go like, oh, we don't have land. Oh, like the excuses that we are giving. Let's do this before we tackle this. So if for uh, another hundred years, there was, uh, we don't have access to certain little, little facilities, we shouldn't ask for the bigger ones, the major ones, that could boost the local economy. That could improve the living standard of the people. We shouldn't tackle that because we don't have the tiny, tiny ones. Well, someone will say we start from the little ones before we get to the bigger ones. Sure, but how long should it take? Mm. You see, so it's like they have taken us for granted. Even the little ones, they are not doing it. Uh, uh, they are not doing them for us because they think we are not fighting for them enough. We are not lobbying for them enough. So they feel like if you if we like, we come and do it for you. If we feel like doing it, we come and do it for you. But we are saying it enough, enough, enough of those things. Eh? Enough of the excuses. The youth. We are going all out if our leaders are not going to lobby for the bigger things to happen in Cape Coast. We are going all out to ask for them, to lobby for them, to make sure they happen in our time. At least for the coming generation, if not for our generation. Like, like do, you, do you understand the argument? Sure. To you, how is the tourism industry in Cape Coast? Are we... Uh should I say friendly enough uh, when it comes to hotel services, when it comes to, you know, the, the, the various sites that the tourists go to? Sure. Is it okay for the, for the tourism industry in Cape Coast or more needs to be done and if, probably if, the airport will follow? If, if it is not okay, why do they come? If they are not in good conditions or like they are not uh, like, you know, but you believe, why, you believe why, there's more. Why? Hmm. No, why do they come? Why do the 87 percent of them come because of our facilities? Because of the castle. Don't forget the, the castle is a world heritage center. Meaning the world the, the, the eye of the whole world is here, right here in Cape Coast. And that is why they've been coming day in, uh, day in and day out. Of course, uh, we would love to uh, you know develop other part of whatever as in our uh, facilities uh, hotel facilities as you are talking about and other staffs we are supposed to improve yeah, but yes. we have them already a three-star hotel in Cape Coast we have just one yeah so what we are saying is an airport and an international airport of that matter for, for that matter if it comes 
will open other avenues. It will encourage investors to come in to do the things you are asking for, like getting more hotels, getting a four-star, five-star hotel. It is possible because if an investor knows uh, this time around the, the, the tourists are landing straight in uh, the city from their various de uh, destinations, there's going to be a demand for the hotels that you are talking about, the five-star and the four-star hotels. So he, he, will, he will like feel even proud to, you know, come and do it because he's, he's going to make returns or something. No, do you, do you, get, do you get my point? That, 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 that's what we, we, we're trying to say. If we have an international airport and the uh, tourists are landing here, an investor could say, let me come and open a mall because Cape Coast, we don't have a mall. That's after the airport has been built? Sure, it could be possible. It is possible. Let me give you a perfect example. Uh, let's take the Cape Coast, the new Cape Coast Stadium as an example. Before it came, there were nothing like uh, stores and all that along the stretch. But go there now. Go there now. If you go there, you see people have, you know, established a whole lot of businesses along that particular stretch because of the new stadium. So it's a package. The new airport will come with a package. It's like killing uh, two bears with uh, a stone, with one stone. Because of the uh, new airport, people will even open uh, aviation schools. Because aviation, in quote, is a whole industry in it, on, it, on itself. Like, do you understand? Yeah. Aviation is an industry on its own. So investors will go like, uh, uh, definitely there will be some children or kids who love to be uh, become pilot and co-pilot and flight attendant and those things in the near future so let me open establish uh, an aviation school we have students who have taken courses in tourism and aviation at our own university university of cape coast they don't have jobs to do in that particular sector when we have an airport and we have an uh, aviation industry here these people are going to get employed they are going to get jobs to do people complain we don't have jobs and we don't have industries but the truth of the matter is that when the airport is being constructed or being established they are going to take laborers no they are going to take laborers there's going to be direct jobs okay. do you understand okay. our mothers and our girls are going to sell during the course of the construction, do you get me? Would that be they, they are going to employ uh, carpenters and masons, and this is these are jobs. Mm. You complain there are no jobs. Those, those so so let's say let's say if uh, it's going to take about uh, a year or two years for us to complete an airport, that period, that period, consistently, you're going to have people. Laborers working. Okay. Do, do you understand? Mm. And after that, they are going to employ people, people like us in airport managers and mechanics and uh, airport managers and all that. It comes with, with, with a whole lot, a whole lot of opportunities, a whole lot of opportunities, my brother. Mm. So you, you disagree with the with the points uh, that have been made with uh, or that have been made by uh, those who are thinking that this may not be the right thing to ask now uh, i call them excuses mm. as i said earlier uh, because what i have uh, witnessed is that anytime anytime there's something like a project coming for the city let's take the kotokraba market for example there were a whole lot of fight. There were court issues and all that. Why? Just for a new market for your city. And you take people to court. Why? The stadium as well. We had a lot of issues. 
not because of anything just for the sake of you know preventing development in the city why should it be so it's a work mentality so we need to change the mindset of the youth especially that those are some certain mistakes that our elders or leaders have you know committed or done we need to avoid those things we should welcome each and every project any developmental project you know if you are saying my airport uh, is not necessary now it's, it's, it's not a priority now champion other you know developmental agenda or something so if you are not for the airport if you are not for airport, airport, push, push something else oh. mm. push for a harbor push for four five star hotels to be established in Cape Coast. fight for those things as you know, I am advocating and we are advocating for an airport. You as well fight for other, st other things to happen in the city. Mm. That is it. Okay. It's as simple as ABCT. If, if I fight and you fight for this project, your politicians, your leaders, the leaders of, of the country will know that this time I run. My people are serious. Cape Coasters are serious. We don't have to take them for granted. Okay. So... Sure. What sort of response are you looking for from um, the leaders of uh, Cape Coast, of the Central region, and also of Ghana? I mean, the uh, deputy um, director of the Coastal Development Authority has spoken. Uh, are you satisfied with what did he say? He said he mentioned that he he's gone to the site with some people. Uh -huh. and, uh, the I person mean, has already gone to the site with some people. And he's dealing with some investors. And the same person is saying it's not a prior, uh, priority. What is he saying? I don't get it. The same person said, eh, and he even recorded uh, a video for me, eh, with investors at a site for the airport, for the proposed airport. Then you go like, it's not a priority. Then what are you about? You're not happy with his response? No, it's, it's negative. It's just an excuse. I thought we were going to meet the aviation ministry and try to sort something. Nobody said it's not a priority. He said it. It was on uh, atlonline.com or something. I saw the story. That was the headline. And that was unfortunate. In the sense that the same person sent me a video of him and then uh, investors going to the site. You know, so the thing is that you know, uh, the, the project, even the airport project is, you know, is been on the, on the drawing board. He's been working on it. So why the excuses? It's not just him. We have the current uh, aviation minister, Cecilia Dapa. She came as well. They visited, uh, they visited some land and all that. And there, there's a land EMAC for that project. So why the delay? Those are some of the questions. There's a delay because... Once again, our leaders are not pushing. They are not fighting for the city. They are not fighting enough for them, for, for, the, for the project to take place. That is why. Okay. So closing in on this interview, I mean, I've enjoyed it. Uh, so you're not voting this year? It's not like I'm not voting. But uh, the concept is that uh, they go around singing, your vote is your power. If my vote is my power... I'm using the same power to demand the airport. Do you understand? Mm. If we are going around singing, your vote is your power, your vote is your power. Then, I'm using the same power to demand an airport for my city. Enough of the Bontria, Bontria. Enough of the Wangana, Wangana. Mm. But you agree the airports can be built before the end of the year, right? Yeah. The airport cannot be built before the end of it's the year. It's all <laughs> about taking action. So you it, begins, it begins with just a step. Mm. They should take the first step. They should take action. That is what we are asking for. So if you are not going to take the action, no airport, no vote. That is the hashtag. And it is as simple as that. No airport, no vote. Because the vote is my power. I'm using that power to ask you to do it for us. Okay. Last one before I go. So, <laughs> last one before I go. Um, talking about the steps, uh, Mr. Kakari Bonzi has mentioned that 
he's taking people to the side they are going to the aviation ministry to drop so that should be some steps enough for you to probably back down on this so why again did he also say it's not a priority it come back to that way so what sort of steps are you looking for a clearing of the land before you back down on this or whatever they should we should see something, see something. less mm. churches mm. you know there's a biblical code that uh, I don't know in the local parlance in Fiapim Yankopan Dakur Dakriye Yankopan in Fiapim. It takes just a day. If they really want to do it, they truly want to do it. Okay. Do you understand? I get it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. It's been great talking you sure? to you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Have a joy. So uh this is where we wrap up on today's edition of Let's Get Talking with Desi. It's been great talking to the candy man. It's a, it's a senior man when it comes to broadcasting here in Cape Coast and in the central region. And the reigning uh, well, 2018 RTP radio personality of the for the central. So you should know uh, who I've been speaking to. Thank you so much for watching. Let me say thank you to the team uh, Eska Media, Joshua Eskin uh, Photography, OB Communications. My name is Desmond Okreko Dance. You can call me Desi Faden. Make sure you like, you share, and you also comment on YouTube. It's Desi Faden. And on Facebook, let's get talking with Desi. Many thanks for watching. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.